Hi, friends. Hi, friends. We're back. It's episode 66 of The Brunch and Judge. We did it. (laughs) I don't know. 66 means nothing, I'm sure, but. No, it doesn't. (laughs) It's a number. We did that. It is a number. So, you know, cool, 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 cool. Uh, This week, our topic is doomed history. So, you know, it's going to be a really positive, uplifting (laughs) conversation. It really is. Uh (laughs) Yep. It'll be happy times here. No bad things could possibly happen when the topic is doomed history. Uh Uh-uh. Nobody's going to get mad or be Mm -mm. hateful. (laughs) No one dies. Nope. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> not at all but before we get into that Claire mm-hmm. what are you judging yes. this week okay this is gonna be uh, it's my own personal like stupid whatever <laughs> anyway I'm just annoyed super okay. annoyed um last couple of times Brandon and I have gone out to eat <laughs> <laughs> um can I just say not everybody wants fries as their side now well, okay. I mean like okay. you do everybody does want them but not everybody orders them. <laughs> there, there, me. I don't. I can't have them. Mm-hmm. I'm not supposed to eat them. Um, so we went out to Chili's and we both got buffalo chicken sandwich. That's and nice. I approve. They just automatically come with fries. So I asked, "Can I have a side salad instead of fries?" I mean, yeah, it's a little bit extra. It's like a couple of dollars, two and a half dollars more. Uh huh. And um, they're like, "Yeah, sure." They still brought me fucking fries with my sandwich. And I'm just like, are you kidding me, guys? I mean, they did bring me the salad. But I'm like, don't just stick them there in front of my face. (laughs) So I immediately, like, took my plate and just dumped them on Brandon's plate. It was like, Mm -hmm. get them out of my face. Congratulations, you get the fries. Because you get double fries I'm trying so fucking hard to not eat the fucking fries. And they give them to me. Right. Oh, and this is like, this is a double judge. There's going to be a double judge here in a minute. So. Okay. Last night, we go to Rafferty's. <clears throat> we got steak. And so the steak is like one side plus a salad. Okay. So I'm looking at the sides. It's all fucking carbs. Well, all yes. of it is just carby, carby, carby. Mm-hmm. They did have broccoli, but I'm just like plain broccoli. Blech. I just, <laughs> uh, uh. I just was not in the mood for it. Mm-hmm. And so then I saw they had a fruit bowl. So I was like, okay, mm. can I get side of fruit the fruit bowl and ranch on my salad and mm-hmm. like, sure they bring us the plate both plates <laughs> loaded down with fries of and course. our steak mm-hmm. and i'm just like mm. <laughs> and then she's like oh didn't you have a fruit bowl yes i did and i hope you're not charging me for it because i didn't want two sides right <laughs> i didn't want fries why did mm-hmm. they assume i wanted fries i didn't want fries <laughs> so then so yeah didn't want the fries and so I, I told Brandon, I said, you just eat off the fries that you want. I don't care. Like, I'm not going to eat this. So then, this is my second judge of this. She brings me the fruit bowl. All it was was two fucking strawberries and cantaloupe and honeydew. Why is it always fucking cantaloupe and honeydew? Nobody likes honeydew. Nobody likes it. And cantaloupe is not very good either, in my personal opinion. I hate melon. No. And that's all it ever fucking is. Yeah. I know. And I'm like, you know what? chick-fil-a who was right across the fucking road there Mm -hmm. their fruit cup has way more variety than yours and they're a fucking fast food restaurant like you need to walk your little pretty ass over there get some fruit and then bring it back to me i know because at least chick-fil-a they've got apples Mm -hmm. they've got mandarin oranges they've got strawberries and they've got blueberries that is four different kinds of fucking fruit that's not just cantaloupe cantaloupe and honeydew which is basically the same thing God. just different colors Blech. and then two two measly strawberries i was like what is this nonsense this is a fruit bowl and it was like in this teeny tiny thing too it was mm-hmm. like not i'm like come You're on like, you that's gave me side? my entire body weight in french fries but you give yes. me this tiny little piece yes. of shit fruit cup yes Ugh. you loaded yeah my my steak was basically covered in french fries mm-hmm. And then, yeah, this, and I'm like, I hope you really hope you didn't charge me for that because that's pathetic. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, I mean, I ate it because I was hungry and I wasn't going to eat the fries. Right. <laughs> you know, and I did have the salad. But still, I was like really annoyed by that. I was annoyed by the fact they dumped all those fries on my plate. And I was annoyed by it was just cantaloupe and honeydew. Like, come on. There are so many other fruits out there, you know, guys. So I, I normally would never tell people to do this because it's super fucking shitty. But like, maybe you need to start saying, I'm allergic to potatoes. I cannot have French fries. So right, that maybe they don't, do. So that maybe yeah. they will make the extra effort to not bring you French fries. Right. Like the next time they bring it, like, oh, I'm sorry. Like I can't send the eat whole thing steak. back and be like, yeah, I, I told you, no, no French fries. <laughs> I can't have potatoes. Like I the reason I said I wanted potatoes. a fruit cup is because I'm not allowed to have potatoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they cannot even touch my steak. No potato. Like I'm usually like, not that person. I'm not going to say anything. I'm. I know. I am too. But I'm like. I've been, and I know this is my health. I mean, it's because of my health. That's why I'm not eating the potatoes, right? You know, and obviously, I mean, health update. I've lost thirty pounds since the whole thing has started. Please. So, yay me, hooray! Which is bananas, and my blood pressure is now under control. <laughs> which yay. I mean, I'm on. I am on blood pressure medicine, but still, it's like thirty pounds. Thirty pounds in two months is ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm like super excited about that. Yay! But um. Yeah, it's like I'm trying to do this the right way. And it's like I don't want to. And my doctor, because that one time I did, when we went to Chili's, I did eat a half part of the bun. And she told me, she was like, well, if you were going to cheat, you made the right decision. She was like, eat the half of the bun and not the French fries. Yeah. You know, because it was a brioche bun that was toasted. And she was like, well, that, she was like, that was better than you just like eating a slice of white bread. <laughs> you know, she said it wasn't like totally white bread. She was right. like, that was, you know, so. She was like, if you were going to cheat, she was like, that was the better thing to cheat with as far as, you know, mm -hmm. the eat the bread, don't eat the potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was why. But I was just really annoyed by that. Like you said, you gave me like three potatoes worth of French fries on my freaking plate. Yeah. And, <laughs> and this teeny tiny fruit cup mm -hmm. of just honeydew and cantaloupe. Ew. <laughs> It's, it's exhausting. Well, and like Spencer and like, I but... <laughs> are constantly complaining when we go out to eat the ridiculous amount of food that they'll give you because right. like we, we went out for breakfast um, a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was last week. Well, I don't know. He was here. Whenever that was. We, we went out to breakfast and like I ordered an omelet, which I don't do very often, but it was later in yeah. the day. So I felt like I could. And it came with hash browns, and then it came with either uh, a huge ass biscuit, two muffins, two pieces of toast, what, or a pancake. And Spencer wanted a pancake with like eggs or whatever, so he got he ordered off the kids meal and yeah. got like a couple of eggs with bacon and hash browns, and then Who that muffins? came with toast. Are these like big muffins or like? I mean, they're they're decent. They're normal muffins. They're not huge, but they're like okay. But like also. Do, like the omelet was probably seven but, but, or eight yeah. eggs, and I ate half yeah, of the usually omelet. You go, like you go to these places; yeah, these huge. omelets are like the entire freaking well, plate. And like yeah. the pancake is like <clears throat> a huge, big pancake on a plate. Oh, it's yeah. like I gave mm -hmm. Spencer the pancake, and so I literally eat only half of the omelet, maybe right. a third to half of the hash browns, and like we hadn't eaten. It was almost it was like ten thirty. We hadn't eaten yet, so like we were right. hungry. But neither one of us could finish our food. He ordered off the kids' meal and he couldn't finish his food. I'm like, this is just too much fucking food for right. a person. <clears throat> and like, it's our constant. We're like, we, because we're always like, we need to just pick a thing and split it. Because, <laughs> I mean, because <laughs> I don't, especially like breakfast food, I don't want to take that home. It's not going to be good later. It's no, not, no, it's it doesn't not. reheat well. So it's just, yeah. And so it's, it's like, what you said is maybe you order a, a steak or something and you get fries, but they don't give you like a nice handful of fries that you can enjoy. They give you mm -hmm. enough French fries to be three meals worth of French fries. And you're like, the fuck? Right. I mean, it's and especially now that I'm losing the weight, like I've noticed I'm not eating. And plus a lot of some of these meds they've got me on are appetite suppressants, mm -hmm. all that too. But obviously that is probably 
absolutely making my stomach shrink because I'm not eating as much. Right. So I've noticed I am not eating as much in general. Like mm-hmm. stuff that I used to be able to just like sit down and completely slam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just like eat no problem and actually still like be able to eat probably a blizzard. A large blizzard afterwards. I need you to know that I, I ate a large blizzard on Friday for is my work's birthday <laughs> present to me. It's literally the only, like I had a bagel at breakfast and then I didn't eat anything else until like nine o'clock at night. The a large, large blizzard. blizzard. And I was like, this is how it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to eat this thing all day long. <laughs> it's supposed to be perfect. <laughs> Sorry, she made me very happy. Continue. But yeah, but I mean, part of it. You know, like we would use, we would go to like Buffalo Wild Wings Mm -hmm. and get like 15 or 20 wings with a large basket of fries, Mm -hmm. eat all of that, and then go get a large blizzard. And now the last time we went, I've been getting salad Mm -hmm. instead of fries, you know, and get my wings. Last time I had like seven wings left over that I took home. I took home, you know, and then it was like, Brandon's like, you want to go get a blizzard? And I'm like, man, if we do, I can't do a large. Mm-hmm. I want to do a small. We ended up not doing it. Mm-hmm. Even last night, we did do blizzards. And I'm like, I need a small. I can't. I can't do a large. And small was fine. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't need a large. <laughs> you know, it's like, if I'm going to do ice cream, I need to do a small. Can't do a large. But I mean, like, I think there is. And it's sort of programmed from our childhood, I think. Um, and still is there there is always a sense of parents trying to get their kids to eat more to finish food or whatever right and like when I was a little kid I didn't eat food I just would starve all day long because I didn't Mm -hmm. give a fucking shit about it Um, Mm -hmm. as I got older but like I remember like constantly having food food pushed on me my grandmother was always trying to make me seconds or third or fifths or whatever because she's like more 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 and so you get pushed into eating more. Right. And then you go to restaurants where they give you a huge amount of food and you feel like you need to eat it. <sighs> right. And I see, mean, for me, I feel like we've like had this that. conversation. Yeah. For me, it's the opposite. Because I love my dad in so many ways. However, no, your dad fucked you up a different way. And I love I love Joe, but all yes. parents fuck us up. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, in so many ways. <laughs> but, however... Because my dad had weight issues as a kid. He wanted so hard for you guys to not have that. Yes, and he I get and I, he did it out of love. It wasn't like he was trying to starve us. Don't get me wrong. This no, was no. not out of this was not out of him abusing us in like, you know, <laughs> that was sense of the way. A hundred percent uh yes. par- a parent wanting their child to not suffer what they suffered. This is the right it's absolutely the right mindset. <laughs> yes. It's like dad I suffered was and overweight. I wanted to. Yes, dad was overweight when he was a kid. And I always heard the story that he went to the doctor and the doctor was like, imagine that you're carrying two 30 pound suitcases with you everywhere you go. Like dad was like 60 pounds overweight. And so it was one of those things. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But also dad is a male and dad hadn't hit puberty yet. Right. And they. So, so there's also that. So then it's like. You know, it's always a story of like, oh, well, dad went home and then nanny fixed him better food and blah, blah, blah. And he lost the weight, yada, yada. But then also dad hit puberty. And he grew. You know what happened when guys hit puberty half the time? They shoot up. Like, look at Walt. Mm -hmm. Walt was a chubby little boy. Mm -hmm. Despite, you know, dad, like not wanting us to get eat a bunch of junk. And then look at Walt. Walt hit puberty and he like grew 10 inches in like a month, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Well, I mean, he was that's... gone for two weeks and then he was taller than me. It's like, what the hell? You know? And how it was with all of the, the grandkids. Like, they all went through, like, chubby stages and then right. they all suddenly grew, got taller. And, yeah, like, you know, obviously being involved in sports helps some, but, like, they all grew. So kids get chubby before they're about to shoot up. That's just what right. happens. Yeah. But for me, it was always dad was like constantly, it was like, why are you in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. What are you doing in the refrigerator? Stay out of the refrigerator. Don't eat those famous Amos cookies. Those are mine. (laughs) Those are my famous Amos cookies. Why are you eating them? Oh, my God. You don't, you don't need that piece of cheese. Like that, that was constantly what I dealt with. Like, why are you in the chips? Get out of the chips. Like, it was like, they were such Nazis about the kitchen area. As a kid, like Mm -hmm. it was, and it was one of those places that it was like so off limits. It was like, 
I had to, I, I was sneaky. I had to be sneaky, you know. It was one of my favorite things to like go get a piece of cheese and like fold it into like the little squares mm-hmm. and get crackers and eat it, <laughs> you know. But it was like I had to be sneaky about it because it was like if I wanted a snack, I couldn't have it. Not openly. Like I had to sneak and get food. You know, if I came home, you know, or or if mom and dad were gone with Walt to like a baseball game or something. Right. Then I could like kind of snack because they weren't there. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. then I could like eat cheese freely. Cheese was my favorite snack. <laughs> cheese it still cheese is, is still my favorite. <laughs> like cheese still is still favorite my favorite snack. snack. <laughs> and I'm so glad that I can eat cheese on this new thing that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So if I couldn't, I'd cry. But uh, <laughs> because they took away bread. Well, white bread, not all bread. But um, anyway, so that was like for you, you know, it was always like eat, clear your plate. Mm-hmm. But for me, it was like, why are you eating everything? And so I feel like for me, that was like when I went to college. That you had it the, was, you could do whatever you wanted. Finally, yeah. you were free. Yeah, I could go and spend my money mm-hmm. on sodas and chips. And mom and dad weren't there to judge me or stop me or constantly be like, why are you eating that? Mm-hmm. What are you doing? You know, it's 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 past nine o'clock. Why are you eating? You know, that kind of stuff. Right. Like I constantly got that growing up. And like I said, you know, they did it out of a place of love because, like I said, dad was chubby growing up and he was trying to prevent that from happening. But in trying to prevent it from happening he made it worse so yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, psychologically yeah. <laughs> really messed me up. <laughs> so yeah <laughs> it's one of those things that you look back now and you're like why am i the way that i am and you're like oh that's oh, why that's because why. i was never allowed to do that at home and so whenever i wasn't at home i went bananas you know i was mm-hmm. like ah, i'm not home you know, no, I remember. I remember you coming over to my house and being so excited that you could just eat chips and drink soda and eat the ridiculous amount of brownies or cookies, or whatever the hell mom made because mom was always right. baking. And I just remember being like, even then, being like so sad for you. Like, ah. <laughs> like it just it shouldn't be that exciting that my mom made fucking brownies. She was always making fucking brownies. Right, like, right. You, but you were and just, we like, did so have, happy like to I just said, be able to have it, you know? Yeah, and we did have, like, the famous Amos cookies. We had them in the house, but those were not ours. Those were dad's. <laughs> no. And he's like, why are you in my famous Amos cookies? Those are mine. You know, it's like, that kind of stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. So, yeah. Anyway. Trying to, and then it was just, like, it got to the point where it was, like, my eyes became too big for my stomach, and I would just... I don't know. It was just m- more, and I got to where it's like even what they gave you at restaurants, because mm-hmm. like, they give you insanely large portions mm-hmm. at restaurants, and even that wasn't enough, you know. Because I think for me it was like fast food restaurants for me they never gave you enough, uh, you know, for mm-hmm. me. <laughs> so it was like I'd always like get extra stuff, which I know Dad would like die a thousand deaths <laughs> because of that, <laughs> you know, if he knew that I was like getting like the meal with the sandwich and the fries and the drink plus like extra things Mm -hmm. you know but now it's like i'm not you know it's like back it down you know like i said she was like oh you can still get things but like get the grilled chicken nuggets with a salad and i've even stopped getting the meal like i just get like either the grilled nuggets or the chicken tenders Mm -hmm. with a side salad and a fruit cup and i don't even get the drink because i'm like i can't have sodas anymore right because I'm on medicine that makes sodas taste gross. And boy, howdy, do they taste nasty. <laughs> like, I don't even want to, like, touch them. Because she asked me this last appointment. She was like, how are you at sodas? And I'm like, I haven't had a soda. I've tasted them since I started this medicine. It's not just, even the drinks, the, like, no calorie, like, fizzy drinks, like mm-hmm. the ice drinks or anything like that. I can't have those either. It's the carbonation. Yeah. Anything that's carbonated, I can't have. Like, it just... Like I can have that. I can like, have the these are yummy. Water. <laughs> this is all yeah. I, I drink can have anymore. the vitamin waters <laughs> or these the buy, the buy teas mm-hmm. or buy mm-hmm. whatevers. I can have those. Anything that's not carb Arizona teas, all that I can do that. I just can't. Can't anything handle that carbonation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anything that's carbonated, it tastes disgusting. <laughs> it's like gangrene in my mouth. It's gross. I don't even know. Cool. It's bleh. <laughs> but so yeah, she's like, 
<laughs> so it's like I can't do sodas at Chick Fil A anymore if I go there. I can't do that. So mm-hmm. I'm just donating. It's like, do I even want to risk the calories with the sweet tea and the diet lemonade and all that jazz? So I'm just like, oh, I could just make my own drink at home. Yeah, you know. Or now I've even been going to Qdoba because I get their bowls. Yes, they got yeah. the. The brown rice. I could do brown rice. <laughs> I, I enjoy the, the... It's been a and long time, but I like Qdoba bowls. Yeah. So it's, it's like I'll get something like that I'm now. Doing. But I was just... Yeah. I was so saddened by Rafferty's Fruit Cup. <laughs> because it was like, come on. Chick-fil-A does a better harder. fruit... Yeah. Yes. Chick-fil-A, a fast food joint, does a better fruit cup than you do. Come on. Mm. Do better. Sorry. That went on longer than I did it. It's okay. It There's a lot more to it than just... <laughs> Hey, fucking fix your fruit cup. It, it went. It went to a whole other place. And it did. There's it a really lot of did. my judgment in there too, because I get I, I get angry at restaurants, yes. and I'm like, why are you giving yes. me twelve thousand potatoes worth of fries? Like, I mean, uh, I, that, I want to eat them all, but that's the. Point. I know that you love fries. I know, but I love fries too. But I'm just like, no, be strong. Don't do it. Yes, I'm impressed. Worth it in the you end. are amazing. <laughs> I am super worth proud. it in the end. I know, because you said it's not forever. It's like when we get to a certain point, we can add the stuff back mm-hmm. in, but and not go bananas with it. But it's mm-hmm. like right now, it's like I'm trying to do better. And <laughs> dang it, these people are not making it easy. <laughs> no, no. <sighs> Stupid restaurants. Check I think up. it's just going to get to the point to where sometimes I'm just going to have to like pack my own bag and just be like, hey, I showed up to your function with my own food. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, people have to do that. I always. I always take like a granola bar with me because I'm always worried that people are going to have stuff because I, I mean, obviously I eat meat, but like, I, I don't want to eat a lot of meat. And sometimes you go somewhere and it's like, Hey, I barbecued like 12 different kinds of meat, mm-hmm. but, uh, we have some potato chips too. And I'm like, oh my God. right. <laughs> you're starved like, to death. And like, and I can eat like, a little uh... bit, but like, if I eat that much meat, I'll feel bad because I don't eat it consistently. Right. Anymore, you're just so like, you don't have a salad Ugh. or anything around here. <laughs> Or like their salad is covered in twelve pounds of dressing. You're like, I mean, right? Or it's like, but we have a pasta salad, and I'm like, "Uh, I can't do pasta, (laughs) you know, or something like that. It's like, ah. So yeah, no, I always always take a granola bar. Uh, Luckily, I'm not truly vegetarian because most places don't have truly vegetarian options. Like, oh, that's that's true too. Yeah. really irritating um, I mean, yeah. but i try I feel to bad to for anybody like <laughs> yeah anybody who is truly vegetarian because i feel bad well don't like... live in a fucking small town because like i can't or even that, get yeah. the city that i worked i'm gonna say past tense now for i was on the fucking committee that do- that puts together like the stupid events and things and i would always be like shouldn't we have a vegetarian option like no and I'm like oh, <laughs> you're like but probably <laughs> Because at Christmas, they give everyone a turkey or a ham, your choice. I'm like, what about people who donate meat? I'm like, oh, well, they just donate it. I'm like, that's shitty. What? You're, that is you're making me donate my gift. From, oh, fuck you. So I'm like, right. I'm out. I'm out. Just whatever. It's, yeah. No. I mean, I, I took the ham. We cooked the ham. I ate ham twice. I might have had two pieces of ham. Spencer had a little bit more. And then we threw it away. It was a total waste. But I tried to get the smallest one I could find. Right. But now but I can't anyway. do that because now, now I'm tra- traumatized by pig products. So I can't have ham. <laughs> or sausage or oh. bacon or <laughs> anything anyway, else. That's, that's my judge. That's was... an excellent judge, Claire. I was annoyed by restaurants lately because not everybody orders fries as their side. <laughs> you know, they <laughs> don't. don't. And like... I actually try not to order fries at a sit-down restaurant because right. I try and limit my fry intake because I love them yeah. too much. Too much. Like, I recognize like my love of French fries, and I know that if I truly embrace my love of French fries, I will die. <laughs> it will actually give me a heart <laughs> attack, and I will be dead. Right. So, in the interest of long, healthy lives, I try to only eat French fries once a week. Gotcha. I mean, it's fair. That's fair. I mean, some anyway. weeks it's more, some weeks it's none. So, like, it's an average. It's, thing. it's, 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 a, it's an average. It's That's fine. Okay. Well, anyway. So, what are you judging? Um. Well, so I have lots of things I could judge, but in in the interest of time management, <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to judge my journey today 
to the bakery. Okay. So, so like, Spencer and I haven't been going to the bakery very much later because much to both of our dismay, Spencer's favorite thing that they made is not currently on the menu. I think they just cycle off and on. Oh, whatever. okay. What did, what was it? He really loved, um, is like a, a smoked a piece of toast, like what, their nice fresh baked bread or whatever, toasted, uh-huh. and it had smoked salmon on it. He loved it. It was very good. It had oh, capers okay. and like dill. Uh-huh. I don't know. It was whatever. I would never eat that for breakfast because I don't, <laughs> I will don't not like fish. eat fish for breakfast, okay? I gotcha. I like salmon. I I even like raw salmon. I eat the raw sushi. I'm a big grown up girl. I've tried it. It's yummy. But you're just not gonna do it. For I'm breakfast. not gonna eat fish for breakfast. It's my rule, hard and fast. But so nothing else on the menu really brings him a lot of joy. So I don't ask to go very much because I pick stuff up for work now and then. So I still get it. But since he's not here, I was like, I'm gonna go to the bakery. I'm gonna get my stuff. <laughs> So I go, <laughs> and it is officially tourist season, and like, ah, yes. not to be a dick, because <clears throat> I too am a tourist at times. I go to places, and I'm a tourist, Yes, and I'm always trying to be nice and polite, and like, none of these people are, are mean or rude, but like, it is a tiny-ass town, so yes. when the tourists come, it basically doubles the population, <clears throat> and I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it feel, I feel terrible saying it. Cause, what? But, like, you notice it in this town more than you notice it. Like, I lived in L.A. Never right. noticed the tourists. And there's always tourists. Uh, right. I lived in, in Salem, Massachusetts. And in October, it's a fucking goddamn nightmare. But even then, you just, it's fine. You just kind of suck right. it up and move on. Not a big deal. They don't impact your normal day-to-day, really. Yeah. But here, where yes. nobody lives suddenly there's all these people and so the line out at the door is astronomical but i'm like you know what it's fine it's a nice cold and cloudy day i'm wearing my pacific northwest sweatshirt i'm having a good time but so like <laughs> i'm standing there and of course i'm texting claire <laughs> i'm also texting spencer um and i am behind a line of there's probably 10 people and they're not in the one big group. They are three separate groups of people. So there's like a couple. And then there is like a small little group of people that seem to know each other. And then there is a couple right in front of me that are separate from them as well. And I swear to God, they are all wearing the exact same outfit. And I'm dying because like Claire, our OG brunch and judge was us making fun <laughs> of the goddamn sorority girls coming to brunch wearing the exact oh, same no. fucking outfits. And it just was this thing like, dude have a personality be different and like there's this uniform pacific northwest tourist hiking outfit (laughs) in which they wear they all wear like very similar hiking pants like they don't just wear leggings because that's right that's how you know that you're not a tourist really it's like you look like crap because you're just running to the bakery to grab some coffee and a pastry So here are these people wearing their little hiking pants. They have on the very specific hiking boot type tennis shoe because that's yes, Mm -hmm. which is not what real hikers wear wear because you need boots to support your ankle if you're really hiking. So these are absolutely fucking tourists and they're wearing their hiking tennis shoes with their hiking pants. And then they're all wearing the exact same puffy coat. Just in different colors. It has a little hood. And I'm like, A, it's not <laughs> that cold, okay? It's not that cold right now. It's going to be, like, I'm, look at me, I'm wearing short sleeves now. Yes. It's like, two hours later, it's hot. It's like, it's it's not that cold. It's two, like, did and you And plus, all you go... were standing there in just a sweatshirt. I'm so, just, like, if, I'm, it had, I, if it had been that me. cold, you would have been, like, yes. bundled. Yeah, yeah. I'm in a sweatshirt. That's it. And I'm wearing my normal tennis shoes. <laughs> because i'm in fucking town i'm not going on a hike why are you wearing this but like so yeah so one they're wearing the same fucking stupid jacket in different colors (laughs) and it's like a warm jacket and i'm going like okay fine if you're going hiking after this and you're actually going up into it's a little bit cooler up there yeah but also you're not going hiking today because it's raining like it's starting to rain and it's gonna rain on and off all day none of you people are actually going to go hiking today. Please just embrace the fact that this is all a fucking lie that you're telling yourself. Because (laughs) they all come from Portland, which makes me laugh. Because we're sunnier, usually, than Portland. 
so they come here in order to get away from the rainy days like this is the rainy day you're not going outside (laughs) (laughs) and i'm just like oh my god i'm dying and then i shit you not like so we go through and like i have no idea what most of those people ordered but the couple in front of me they were like picking up cookies i'm like what the fuck are you even doing like i want two of those cookies and two of those cookies i'm like this is breakfast what are you what are you yeah doing? like what are you doing what are you why did you wait in this line forever to pick up fucking cookies what is wrong with you so i'm just like dying inside because all i wanted was my freaking quiche because i love their quiche and then like i got a couple of things so i could have a special treat later today and i got a scone for tomorrow and then i got coffee because i'm not a pleasant person until i've had my coffee <laughs> And then, like, I, so, like, pleasure with this, but you pick up your to-go orders, because they heat up the quiche for you, they get, they make the coffee, you pick them up outside, and there's a small area that's covered, but most of it is open to the quote-unquote elements, and so all these people are, like, huddled underneath trying to get tables, because it's like, oh my god, it's raining, and I'm like, are you even from the Pacific Northwest? Because, like, this isn't actually <laughs> rain. They're all, like, putting their hoods, I'm like, we don't we don't do we don't do (laughs) it's like you don't put hoods on here it's barely raining like it's not even gonna frizz my hair rain like (laughs) you gotta stop like it's gonna rain later but like it's not right now (laughs) what is even happening so i was dying and i was sending all of my hate like because i you're like get out of my way and let me get my quiche (laughs) and i'm like it's i went a little later thinking that I would miss some of the 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 huge tourist crowd and boy was I wrong these are all the lazy tourists that that thought they were going right. to go hiking today but they aren't ah. not hiking it's a lot you were wrong <laughs> and I'm like god damn it I just like yay for tourist industry for the town it's all great great for the bakery glad that they're getting you know lots of business they deserve it but also ugh, could you right. just be original for like five minutes the same fucking coat and then like there's a guy who had the coat except it was a vest he had the puffy vest but it was the exact same (laughs) and i was like the fucking hell man oi it's not that cold it's not that cold oh but it is (laughs) and again this is coming from me the girl who's perpetually cold like, I wear my North Face <laughs> jacket until All well time. into June, and I didn't put it on today because it wasn't that cold. Mm-hmm. Pansies. God. Okay. That's it. <laughs> That's my judge. It just, it brought back all of my early memories of our, because I was judging getting my brunch. Those... I was there for brunch, and I'm like, this is Claire now going for brunch. And then we're As judging, we're judging all the girls in their Han Solo pumpkin spice latte outfits. That's right. <laughs> With their vests and their leggings and their Ugg boots. And like, yes. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I absolutely am that basic bitch. Minus, I'm not a fan of pu- pumpkin spice lattes. Different latte. Oh, me and I'm here for no. it. I have the Uggs. I'm here for leggings that aren't see-through. Uh, yes. <laughs> you know? And, and like, I, I love my North Face jacket more than anything. I wear it all the damn time. So, like, I'm here to be a basic bitch. But I will not wear that outfit if someone else is wearing that outfit. Because that's weird. <laughs> Not really into twinning. Not a twinner. No. So that's it. That's my judge. <laughs> if you're going to be a tourist, please try not to look like every other tourist. That's all. Yes. Just a little different. Your... Different jacket. Put a different jacket on. Right. Why? <laughs> Goddamn cookies. It's like, I'm here desperate. <laughs> for He's like, cookies. I want my breakfast. Like, I'm here your cookies. <laughs> Oi whatever Look, if you're going hiking you're gonna need more than cookies thank you please I was, like, <laughs> I was like at least i i almost ordered the avocado toast because it's really good but i really love their quiche and yes. like i will make my own avocado bagel because that's what's in my cabinet but i can't make my own quiche because i'm one person and that is too much <laughs> yes so but you're like you're going hiking you're gonna need some protein not all that sugar just saying but I'm like, whatever. But no. they're not really going hiking. Let's no, again, they're fake no hiking. one is going hiking today. <laughs> that, that was hiking. a lie. <laughs> so whatever. Anyway. Whatever. That was That's a good it. judge. Thank I you. appreciate it. I appreciate that because yeah. 
uh, you know, to bring it back around to where this all started. Maybe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all of our judginess, right? Uh, I have, it's for like, some reason. We're like, why are all these people dressed the same? What there, is for some reason, that just sets off <laughs> these bizarre alarm bells that I just cannot explain. Like, two people looking alike, I'm thinking, oh, they were being cutesy and did this on purpose. Or they were like, But oh, when it's a whole group, way. you're like. Then, I, but then you're like, there's this peer pressure thing happening that I just don't. Oh, understand. You're like, is this a cult? What is, is going on? It is a cult. Hike, okay. <laughs> like, what is happening? Just so you know, hiking in the PNW is also a cult. Yes, because I thought I liked hiking until I moved here, and then I realized I don't nope. much at all like hiking. I like nope. walking in nice. I like walking. Settings, <laughs> but like, I grew up. In Kentucky with the Appalachian Mountains, which are not uh, really mountains, by the way. <laughs> I mean, they are. They're mountains, big but hill. they're like they're big hills. <laughs> they aren't giant things of rock covered in snow all year long. And right. like when you hike in the Appalachians, it's kind of like a this, it's like blue, doo, 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 like a slow, like it's a little right. bit up, not... and then a little. But like when you hike here, it's like you go up and then you like walk kind of on a diagonal to go straight across because it's literally that steep and you're like fuck I don't want to do this anymore so no you're like I'm not over my head (laughs) I'm we I mean we've been a few times you know but I'm like "Eh, this is not my level of hiking I'm more of a walking in the woods kind of a girl there you go (laughs) anyway so there you have it there I like that judge that was good there's our judges for the day so (laughs) Time to bring us to our topic du jour. Yes. Which was, of course, doomed history. So, Claire, what mm-hmm. uplifting story have you brought us today? I'm going to be talking about the Challenger space shuttle. Nothing bad <laughs> happened there at all. No, not at all. No traumatic memories oh, from that. Nothing. Mm-mm. Mm. Oh, but I got my sources from Wikipedia, Britannica.com, History.com, Space.com, NASA.com, and I watched the Netflix documentary thingy called Challenger, The Final Flight. I had seen it before, but I did it just to, like, refresh Mm -hmm. my memory. (laughs) So, anywho, let's get into this. Um, Challenger Space Shuttle was the third space shuttle in the space shuttle program okay um uh the space shuttle program was launched as a way to have like regular space flight almost like eventually to be like commercial space flight oh for people to like yeah to eventually oh, well that lead up out. to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah obviously <laughs> to eventually lead up to like taking normal people up to space and for um hmm. you know to take uh businesses like if they had satellites or anything like that up into space that were the thing. satellite yes i yes. love it okay yeah. mm-hmm. none of those things happened but okay yeah mm-hmm. good good i mean they did why they did take satellites and shut up in space but not to the extent but they were wanting to do eventually get up to moving it to like doing like two a month hmm. like that was their end goal oh. with all of it like that, that was what they hoped to do and that they were gonna they were saying that by the end of it they were hoping that it would like pay for itself which you know, also didn't happen it was so <laughs> fucking expensive oh, anyway i knew none <clears throat> of that okay <laughs> yeah that was like the whole purpose of the space shuttle program was to eventually get to like that level of yeah hmm. i guess kind of what like elon musk is trying to like do now well and he's so. also not doing it, but anyway. right? All that success no, is just happening yeah. everywhere. What he's trying, yeah, <laughs> not doing. Anyway, so it was the third shuttle in the shuttle program um, behind the Enterprise, which was the first, and the Columbia, which was the second. And um, it had been launched nine times previously in three years. Um, it's been a total of 62 days in space, and a lot of firsts happened with the Challenger. Uh, it was the first shuttle to host a spacewalk, like the other ones, I guess, just went up into space and orbited. Okay. <clears throat> and that was April 7th, 1983. Um, the first shuttle to carry American female astronaut, uh, which was Sally Ride, and the first African American astronaut, uh, Guion Bluford. Um, 
uh, also carried first Canadian, Mark Garneau, in 1984, uh, the first mission where astronauts replaced, not replaced, repaired a satellite in space. Hmm. <clears throat> so, I mean, it did a lot of good things. <laughs> They, they and had some some wins and successes. They Very cool. Did. Very cool. Yes, yes. Oh, and this the whole space shuttle program was like a way for them to reuse the shuttle because right. up until then it was that was the whole thing too. Is it was super expensive because every time it was like everything was destroyed, and it was just like and it's a one time thing and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> and so with this, it was like everything could be reusable, like the rocket boosters, like even though they that those are the things that like fall off. Mm-hmm. of the sh- the shuttle once it's launched into the water they go and collect those and bring them back and reuse them <laughs> oh i don't think i knew that i didn't realize yes. that part was reused cool yes so they go and collect those and bring them back and redo all that stuff so um <clears throat> the 10th launch slash mission for the challenger um this um primarily was to deploy a tracking and data relay satellite that would have been part of a constellation to enable constant communication with orbiting spacecraft. And also, they were planned to study Halley's Comet as it passed near the sun and to deploy and retrieve a Spartan satellite. That was part of that deal. But this mission also had a lot more media attention than normal because this one had the first teacher that was supposed to go into space right i remember that and her name was krista (laughs) krista mcauliffe and she was 37 year old uh high school social city teacher from new hampshire uh she was married to a guy named steve and they had two kids a son and a daughter she was a social studies teacher Uh uh-huh i guess i just assumed science because that's what the wikipedia said okay i don't i mean i don't know cool in fact i think britannica even said that too mm. i mean why social not studies who am i to, to but it was a national it was a national thing that reagan put into place i think it was called teachers in space mm-hmm. anyway um but um i think they said eleven thousand teachers applied and oh, wow. they got it down to yeah and they got it down to 10 10 finalists and they all came in and then they had to do a bunch of like physical tests then right. to see and then at the end they picked the like a runner up who was like if something happened to Krista then the runner up would get to take her place so they right. had like a backup and then you know Krista was the winner and the lady who I think her name was Barbara was the one but um they had her on the documentary talking about but it was um, almost her Ugh. yeah <laughs> that's gonna be horrifying. Who, and she did eventually get to go into space in 2007 just oh, i did not know that uh-huh hmm. but she was from new hampshire and um she won that national competition she beat out eleven thousand other teachers and earned her spot among the seven member crew uh she had to go through months of physical and psychological training to prepare her for the launch and re-entry and um like i said she was going to be the first teacher to teach a class from orbit and that she was going to teach two classes up in space and then when she got back she was going to spend the next nine months touring the country uh lecturing across the ux teaching and the end goal was to highlight the importance of teachers and to interest students in high tech slash um, which now would be considered STEM careers. Right. You know, try to get them interested in, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of career path. Um, Also on this crew was a guy named Dick Scobie. Uh, He was the crew commander. Uh, He was in the air force at one point. He was, his degree was in aerospace engineering uh, he was married to a woman named June, and they had two kids, uh, Kathy and Richard. So he was the crew commander. Um, there was uh, my papers tangled up in my cords. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, a guy named Michael J. Smith. Uh, he was married to a woman named Jane. They had three kids. I didn't catch the third kid's name. They had two of the kids on the documentary, mm. uh, Allison and Scott. But he did have another child. They had three kids. He was the pilot. Um, he was in the Navy. He was also 
I had a degree in aerospace engineering. Um, a guy named Ellison Onizuka. He was a mission specialist. He was in the Air Force, and he was married to a lady named Laco, and they had two daughters, Janelle and Darian. He was also the first Asian American who was supposed mm-hmm. to go into space. And he was Japanese American, mm-hmm. and he was from Hawaii. So um, there was a lady named Judith Resnick. She was a mission specialist. Um, she was an electrical software biomedical engineer. <laughs> and she was the first Jewish woman to go, was supposed to go into space. Actually, she was. She'd already been up, I think, once. Um, a guy named Ronald McNair. He was a mission specialist. Uh, he was going to be the second African-American in space. He had a PhD in physics. And he was a fifth degree black belt in karate. <laughs> Um, a guy named Gregory Jarvis, he was a Hughes, he worked for Hughes Aircraft Engineering, I'm assuming Howard Hughes, (laughs) and he was the electrical engineer, and he was an Air Force captain, he was married to a woman named Marsha. So all these people had families, Mm -hmm. you know, it was just, (laughs) like, (laughs) Uh, yeah, I know. So the... A lot of this is going to be in layman's terms because I don't know if y'all didn't know this, but I'm not a rocket scientist. What? <laughs> no? All this time, Claire, I thought you were. I know. Shock, surprise, right? Turns out Claire does not know astrophysics that well. Huh. No. Interesting. No. I'm going to dumb this down as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the Challenger mis- mission was delayed. For several reasons, over several days. Um, Part of it was um, it was grounded because they had trouble getting the Columbia, the previous shuttle, was up, and they had trouble getting it grounded. Mm -hmm. So it delayed because they needed to get it back on the ground. (laughs) Um, It was delayed because of weather. There were lots of issues Mm -hmm. with weather leading up to it. And delayed because of technical difficulties. Hmm. A lot of that going on. Um. The one day that would have been good that they were supposed to go, they called for rain, and the rain didn't come in until later, and if they had just gone ahead and gone, it all would have just been, yeah. But the rain didn't come in until later, and they waited and missed it, and yeah. And so I'm just like, ouch. Mm. Ooh, not good. And then they kept waiting, and shit kept happening, and it was just like, ugh. Anyway. So... January 28th was the launch date, the new launch date, because mm-hmm. I think they, like, delayed it over six days. Um, the night before, the temps dropped to something like 18 degrees. This is in Cape Canaveral, guys. Yeah, that's Florida. really bizarre. It was, like, a freak, yeah, it was a freak thing, you know, and by the time that they were supposed to launch at 9.38 a.m., they had only risen to 20, 26 degrees. Um. What year yeah. is this again? It's 86. 86? Okay. 1986. Okay. Yeah. Making sure that I have yeah. my... January I thought 28th, it was 86, because like, I have no memory of this at all, but I have yeah. manufactured a memory of it. So. Right, right. January 28th, 1986. Um, So, they had to like run some water to keep the pipes from freezing, and because they had all this water running, there was like ice all over the place. Mm. I saw over the fixtures. I mean, all over the launch pad. I mean, Ugh. they said some of these icicles were like one and two feet long, like hanging off of shit. I'm and just like, everyone is like, this is fine. Right. And see, and they talked about how, like, because it was so cold, like, they're talking to the spouses and the children of these people, how, like, the night before, these astronauts were just like, oh, they're not going to go tomorrow. It's too cold. Mm-hmm. It's going to be too cold. They're not going to go. So they said, like, the night before, it was just kind of like this chill, like, eh, whatever, because nobody thought they were going to go. Right. Because like it was going to be canceled for cold. all the other things, so. Right. They're like, it's not going to, they're not going to do this. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, ice was everywhere, all over the aircraft, all over the launch pad. Um, they wound up delaying the launch until 11.38 a.m. when the air temps finally got up to 38 degrees mm. <laughs> and they were able to knock a lot of the ice off but still i'm just like mm, whatever 
Um, so they launched at 11:38 a.m. on January 28th. Uh, 37 or yes, yeah, 73, 73 seconds in. Um, it exploded and broke apart in smoke and fire in front of the whole country on live TV. And it was the first major accident slash disaster of the shuttle program, which was terrible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was just like, what is happening? And to see, like, y'all need to watch the documentary because the documentary is just like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. I mean, those people's families hey, were you're, there. You're there, you're watching, you're excited. And, and then it, yeah. All going and it was to drives. hear them, like, talk about it on the documentary. It was like, in the moment, they didn't know what happened when it happened it Mm -hmm. was just it was one of those where it was like and then they came over the loudspeaker and said that the shuttle had exploded but then it was like one of those things where they thought maybe if it landed that they were because the guy was maybe still able to pilot it like Mm -hmm. you know they still had a smidge of hope smidge (laughs) But it was one of those they did it was like didn't know what they were actually seeing. Right. When it happened. So after it happened, um, Reagan, Ronald Reagan, President Reagan, appointed a special commission committee to investigate. <clears throat> and it was concluded that the severe cold reduced the resiliency of two rubber O rings that So in the rocket boosters, the big things that shoot it off, these O-rings go where they connect and um, they're supposed to seal it off. Right. And the cold kept them from sealing because when rubber gets hard, it's not pliable. (laughs) Right. And um, they didn't close the seal. So this is where I'm going to like try to dumb it down. The hot exhaust gas, I'm kind of reading this basically straight from <laughs> what was on one of the sites because it was like, okay, sure. this kind of dumbs it this kind of dumbs it down a little bit. It says the hot exhaust gas was able to leak, causing a flame, which you can see like in the they found they show it and it was from the angle that they were at, they couldn't see it when it happened, but one of the video cameras, they sh- eventually show it. And that's one of the things is when they first released it, they're just like, oh, it's a plume. They re- NASA refused to call it a flame. And so the media was like, it's a flame. And they're like, no, it's a plume. <laughs> what the, the fuck? fuck? Just like, what are you doing, NASA? Bad shit is happening. Just it doesn't matter what you call yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, so it's a, causing a flame that gradually eroded a strut that secured the booster's base. To a large external tank carrying liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen for the orbiter engines. So it caused that strut. And then it said at the same time, a thrust booster lagged, causing the nozzle steering systems to compensate, which like, I guess, shook it. Mm -hmm. So the strut broke because of the heat and the flame. And then the booster, because the strut broke, the booster thing swiveled, and it says the nose, forcing the nose through the top of the external fuel tank, causing the tank to collapse and explode. So because of these O-rings that caused this chain of of reaction. Fucking rubber is yes, that's insane. So because of these two (sighs) O-rings being cold overnight. And it was something to do with, like, I guess where they were situated, because what I read on one of them was, like, one side, I think it was the left side, was, like, 20-something degrees, but on the right side, it was, like, 8 degrees. Like, where they were sitting, wow, I guess, okay. where the sun was was hitting it. Well, oh, right, or, yeah. Because it was, like, in the shadow. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> so. Wow. So what makes this a doomed history? I'm so glad you asked. (laughs) (laughs) So this is where it gets really shitty and shady. Um, The day before the launch, the manufacturer of the O-rings and the rocket boosters is this company called Morton Thiokol. Okay. 
out and they're out in Utah. And um, they, the, and, and this is something that had been going on since the shuttle program launched back mm-hmm. with Enterprise in Columbia and even Challenger with these O-rings. Mm-hmm. They had noticed that when they, when the boosters were, this is why I was saying they collect them and they look at them afterwards. Right. To reuse them when they would go out to the ocean and collect them and bring them back in and they're looking at them, they were noticing that the O-rings were degrading with the heat and stuff like that. But they noticed that with one of the launches, it was, they were degraded worse than normal and that there was like a place where the O-ring was completely like something had gotten out. And the only difference was that particular launch, it was 53 degrees outside. Which was the coldest launch, the coldest temperature, air temperature launch that they had ever done. Oh, so they and this had was prior an indicator this, that perhaps cold temperatures were bad for these old O rings. Oh yes. shit. Yes. And so these engineers were like, they kept saying these O rings are an issue. Mm-hmm. The ones who were doing these, you know, rocket boosters. And so the night before they're going over everything, <clears throat> trying to decide if they're going to launch the next day. And it was like, is there anything that's an issue? And these engineers were like, yes, O-rings. These O-rings in these temperatures. They're literally saying the O-rings and the temperatures. Is bad. Yes. Oh, my God. Okay, yes. this is awful. Yes. And there was a conference call. So you had all these people, the engineers and like the presidents, vice presidents, whatever, of Morton Thiokol in this room with a few people they're on a conference call in this conference room on a phone call with people from nasa and <clears throat> i think cape canaveral they were like in a trailer on their little mm-hmm. phone there was like five or six of them in there and um talking about this and the guy from nasa is like it's inconclusive it's a guy his last name was malloy i can't think of him as larry malloy anyway this guy was seemed like a real dick and he he said he had no guilt about it and i'm like you asshole yeah he's like he's like an old <laughs> geezer now he might dead be dead and he didn't feel yeah. guilt about it oh my yeah God. yeah like you ass yeah go yeah this is why i'm like oh you won't be mad about this at all yeah <laughs> go watch that documentary you won't be angry <laughs> But he's he's just like, oh, these results are inconclusive, blah, 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 because they didn't have any data below 53 degrees. So even though that one some data. Yeah. And so but the people from Morton Thiokol were like. Or at least the engineers were were Mm -hmm. like, no, 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 no. These O-rings are an issue. We know it's an issue. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But then they're like, well, can we take a, we need to take a, like a little break so we can just discuss amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. And basically they only took a poll amongst the higher ups, even though the lesser engineers were in the room. And so it was one of those that was like, they all voted to go ahead and say they were going to launch. Even though the engineers were there going, no, 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 no. Oh my God. So they came back and they decided to say that the data was they that they were going to agree with the Malloy guy and say that the data was inconclusive. And so they had one of the upper that so NASA came back and said, "Will you sign something and fax it over?" Basically, as a CYA for NASA. Yeah. And so this guy named Joseph Gilminster, I think was his name, signed it. And this, and they had the guy who, the one guy, he was like, yeah, I knew how to use the fax machine. Mm-hmm. And so he was the one guy, they had him on there and he was like, I faxed it over and I feel terrible for it. Like he, he was yeah. crying, like he was getting, you know, emotional about it. And, you know, they talked about how when they were sitting there watching it, that they're praying that it was in the guy who was like in charge of that, the rocket boosters, his daughter was on there and she was talking about how he kept saying it's not over, it's not over, it's not over, and then it exploded, and it was just like, you know, these, some of these guys were really emotional about it. They yeah. felt horrible. Yeah, well, because they were like, we kept saying, we <clears throat> we had to feel like you didn't do enough because it happened, even though they were trying. They were saying, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yes, and so they this said- is why the management evi- is garbage. I know, right? Like- so they said the evidence of the failure of the O-rings was inconclusive, and there was 
a substantial margin in the event of failure or erosion. So they said to proceed with launch. And the NASA project manager who was on the conference call called the NASA team leader to discuss the launch decision amid weather concerns, but didn't mention anything to the NASA team leader about the O-ring discussion. And so they decided to launch. It was all about weather. Oh, my God. So, yeah. like, the NASA people that were like, okay, we'll launch, had no idea that this ha- conversation had even happened. Some of them didn't. Yeah, no. <sighs> Fuck that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so there was in this commission committee mm-hmm. <laughs> that Reagan, you know, he wanted one of the, he had a guy and he told him he was like, try not to make Matt. It was, a, I think it was a senator whose last name was Rogers, who said, try not to make NASA look bad. But they also had a scientist whose name was Feynman on there who was like a Nobel laureate guy. <laughs> And Sally Ride found out about the O-rings. And so she, like, gives this other guy who's on the committee this paper about the O-rings. And so, it, like, find a way to, like, mention this mm-hmm. in this hearing thing, you know. And so he gives the information to Feynman because it's like, this guy will know what. And so he goes and he buys O-rings in the middle of this committee hearing. He, he has, like, smaller O-rings mm-hmm. and does this whole thing where he puts them in cold water. And then he stretches them out and then he shows that they don't bounce back and they don't. So he does this whole thing like on TV. Wow. At this committee thing. And because he's a scientist, it's like, oh shit. You know, so Mm -hmm. it was this whole, I mean, it was like, ha 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 ha, you know. (laughs) So, I mean, people lost jobs that they should have because fuck those people. Yeah. But I mean, it was, it was almost like a big, it it seemed like it was going to be like a big cover up. Mm Mm-hmm. To a certain extent, you know, it was like, fuck you guys. People died. Yeah. Seven people died. People lost husbands and sons and fathers and sisters and moms. And it's just like, for what? <clears throat> because you all wanted to save your pride and your whatever, <laughs> you know? If there is any question <clears throat> in something like that, like any thought that perhaps something might not withstand the situation like you just pause like what the hell right those are right real people right and so they were like saying that at this point nasa was you know kind of underfunded and they were feeling the pressure and the push Mm -hmm. to keep going because that was the whole goal of the shuttle program was to like get these shuttle launches up to a certain standard Mm -hmm. You know, because like I said, they were hoping to do eventually get up to like two a month, you know, and almost make it like a commercial space flight thing, which it was like, what? (laughs) Yeah. I didn't I didn't realize that was the whole point of the shuttle program. I'm like, I didn't realize that that was going to be that was the end goal of the shuttle program. But, you know, once this happened, obviously, the shuttle program was suspended immediately and it wouldn't launch anything again for over two years. Um, they did wind up doing a complete overhaul on the rocket boosters, obviously. Um, and part of that obviously included the O-rings and they installed heaters to maintain consistent higher temps Mm -hmm. with the O-rings. So the O-rings wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be a problem in the future. Yeah. Wouldn't like lose their resiliency. Um, they also did make some safety updates. To the shuttle itself, even though that really wasn't an issue in this Mm -hmm. instance, um, they did update some landing gear to improve the steering, and they did add a new escape option where the astronauts could jettison out a side hatch to escape, even though that wouldn't have, like, saved them in this instance. Um, They aren't sure exact. They suspect or hypothesize. I don't know which word would be better. (laughs) Guess. They guess that the people survived the initial blast but they either died due to lack of oxygen on the way down because Mm -hmm. everything would have just cut off or died from the impact hitting the ocean right one or the other so they feel like they said survived the initial explosion of the challenger i don't know if that's a positive thing or not 
I know, right? I honestly would have rather just like died from lack of oxygen. Just well, <laughs> I know. feel like I would just rather just die, not know, not have time right. to panic about it. Anything, <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, the shuttle program was eventually shut down in 2011. Oh, before that, um, there was another incident in 2003. Uh, the space shuttle Columbia burned up on re-entry. Mm-hmm. I remember that one. And seven people perished in that. But after that, there really were no incidents. <laughs> that was the last one. Mm-hmm. And the shuttle program was shut down in 2011. Um, obviously did not meet its main goal of consistent space travel. And the Atlantis, Spatial Atlantis, was the last shuttle to make any kind of space flight so mm-hmm. that is the doomed history of the challenger because people fucking knew there was a problem and they gambled with people's lives and decided to go anyway yeah. that is disgusting. so that's to me why that's doomed history that is, is do- because they, they knew <laughs> they knew oh they knew. my god wow and yeah I knew none of that. I have not watched that documentary, apparently. Um, but it yeah. is one of those things that, like, <laughs> I guess I have seen enough footage of it happening that it, that it right. feels like I saw it in real life, but I didn't. I right. was like three years old. I couldn't possibly remember. I wouldn't even be three. I was two. I was two years old. I started to say, I wasn't even two. I was, yeah. I was almost two. Yeah. So I'm like, I absolutely have no memory of that at all whatsoever, but still. I'm like, ugh. Wow. So yeah, to me that is why that is doomed history because they knew there was a potential issue. They didn't I don't think they knew to what extent it would affect them, but they knew there was a potential issue and didn't stop it. Wow. They could have said we could wait another day. Like what's the harm in waiting another day? And they didn't. Hmm. And look what happened. I think to me, what always stands out is that the teacher was on that flight. I mean, like a right. true one hundred percent civilian. Like just mm-hmm. it was yep. all for goodwill and right to really further promote NASA and getting people excited about space and going into STEM careers and that you wouldn't take the extra care, specifically knowing that. Right. Just makes me nauseous in a way that I can't explain. Like, no one, of course, deserved to die. Like, then no. Is, but, no, like, no. I feel like there's extra care that's taken when you have, like, a super right. special guest. Like, you care a little harder, right? Because you know yes. the whole goddamn world is watching. Right. And what is also, I feel, extra shitty about this, too, is the, I think it was Gregory Jarvis. He was supposed to have been on the two previous space shuttle flights, but he got bumped. Because they put senators on those two flights. Ah, fuck that. So he ended up being on the doomed flight. No. Yes. Yep. I hate that. Yep. He got bumped from the two previous ones because they put U.S. senators on the two previous flights. And I'm just like, damn. What? (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Mm. So I'm just like, that's terrible. That is terrible. And, and I hate it. Yes. I hate it very much. Yes. <sighs> well, thank you, and Claire. It was, it was just, yeah. And it, it was in an era when NASA was trying to diversify because they said up until this, like the 70s, it had all been like white Anglo-Saxon men. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to bring in more African Americans, more women, you know, and it was this whole thing. And then, you know, the teachers in space and they were trying to get kids excited about it because the kid who the actor who played Ralphie in A Christmas Story. Oh, right, right. He was he was like the spokesperson for like there was a program about um some kind of kids in space, you know, kids doing 
NASA or something like that. I can't remember the name right. of it. But you're trying to get kids interested in doing, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And he, he was going to be part of that with Krista McAuliffe was after she got back, he was going to travel with her oh. and do part of the lectures and stuff like with the students mm-hmm. because he was part of that with the children. And he was there and they interviewed him in that documentary, too. And he wow. talked about how, yeah, and it's just and how he was just, you know, you're there and it's like you see that happening. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. You know, because he said that that was going to be the next thing was like kids in space. Yeah. You know, once they did the teacher thing and, you know, and they did bring it back and I th- they didn't call it like teachers in space. They called it something else. And that's how her um, second, the Barbara, wound up going in 2007. I think they said she went on the Endeavor space shuttle. Mm. She did wind up going into when, space and, and did get to teach. That was like, you know, to be like, right. I could have been this the one that didn't make it and instead 20 years right. later I get the opportunity right right insane so yes and it's just like oh my gosh that's kind of creepy but um yeah it's a good documentary I suggest you watch it it's you know they talk about all the families and all that it's just and they have a lot of the family inter- they interview people from the families and it's just kind of heartbreaking in a way because it's just mm-hmm. dang, you know, because it's almost like they lied to them, you know, it's just, and it's like they're try- there was almost a cover up and it, then there wasn't. Yeah. And you're like, I'm glad there wasn't because that would have been Worse. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it was just, but then it was like when it happened, they're telling, like, they have recordings of them telling people like, stay off the phones, whatever your screen is in this moment, don't touch it. Like, just start getting all your data. Like, oh, do wow. not, like, don't, ex- like, the people in Houston, mm-hmm. like, once they launch, then they turn everything over to Houston because Houston's the one who co- right. communicates with them while they're up. And it was like, whatever your screens are in this moment, do not touch it. Just start collecting all your data. Do not, nobody's allowed to use the phone. It was like, nobody was allowed to go to the bathroom. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was like, don't talk to the press. It was just like, just stay where you are. Don't touch anything. <laughs> it was like, because because everybody was thinking that something else had happened. And then when they found out it was this overing thing. And then it was like, oh, but they fucking knew. Mm-hmm. They had documentation that this had been a problem since the fucking beginning. And it was like. Just makes you not want to trust anything. Right. Right. Especially when you've got the engineers are the ones that were like, no, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. Absolutely not. <laughs> So, yeah. Anyway. Oh. So, that's my doomed history story. <laughs> that feels horrible. I feel horrible it now. It <laughs> was horrible. It was so horrible. Oh like we my said, God. nothing bad here. Oh, my God. Nothing bad here. Yes. Oh. It was horrible. Blair, that was amazing and also terrifying. Um, what you may not is know terrifying. is that I... While I have always loved space and wanted to study space, because I really I wanted to be an astrophysicist. That was one of my career goals until space I had a middle school science me. teacher fuck my love of science. So there's Aww. that. Um, but my sister apparently has also always loved space, but like she's always wanted to like go to space. I've had zero interest in going to space because I don't mm. really... The thought of being in a thing that there's no oxygen outside and I have to trust the the mechanical right. thing. It's just uh nah. hmm. all kinds of things can go wrong. Yeah, I'm I'm not there. Um here for pictures and really cool telescopes. I have a telescope. Right. You know. Mm-mm. But I would not volunteer to go to space and my sister absolutely would. So there's that. <laughs> I mean teach their own. Um I'm I'm content here on our little planet Earth. <laughs> I mean, I like to move around and see all the things, but I'm I'm content here. Thanks. But so now I'm gonna have that that nightmare to contend with. I guess I always thought NASA was good and pure, and like not really. I mean, they weren't all bad. Just a couple of assholes who listened to lots of assholes from a company. Just because, well, I mean, there was the one asshole was basically like, 
it's fine. I want to, yeah. Mm. Like, it's inconclusive. Are you sure? Really? You want to make that gamble? Mr. I don't feel any guilt. You know? I can't, like, I mean, I feel guilt. And it's not even anything to do with me. But, like, I feel guilt that. Right. About it. That that we live in a world in which we let this so shit how happen. How do you like, sleep at night knowing that you made that decision? Like, even if. Seven people died. Seven families lost family members I mean, you know even if you say something like you know i have always felt terrible that my decision led to this i i don't feel guilty because i made a decision based on the evidence presented in front of me i i, I trusted my decision it was the wrong decision like that's that's another statement entirely but like i don't feel guilt i'm like i'm sorry what is the fucking wrong with you right like you should and there, but there was a guy who was like and I don't know, I can't remember exactly what he had when mm-hmm. he made the decision, but he said based on, he said, I made the decision based on what I had in front of me. And he said, I would make the same decision again based on what I had in front of me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, ah, what? Would you really? You wouldn't at this point say, you know, now that and I I'm understand. Just like, These are old yeah. white men with all the audacity that was on clearance, apparently at NASA that day. And I am just like, what is wrong with you? So it's what I get it. Like, I can understand being like, you know, I made that decision on the evidence in front of me. Knowing what I know now, these decisions are, are, are I would make it a decision like this differently because I now understand that there. Right. When there's that gray area, you have to err on the side of human life. Like, I mean, come on. Pretend like you grew from this situation at least god damn it old white men you know how i feel about them i mean they're like some of these guys they were like doubling down yeah (laughs) and like maybe they feel like they have to or they open themselves up to lawsuits or something i don't know i I don't know know. yeah Uh, garbage or maybe they just feel like they they can because they're old white men and they're so fucking self-assured about everything right or it's like or they're like, it happened so many, you know, what, almost 40 years ago at this mm-hmm. point? Meh. We don't care. I mean, the documentary's been out for a while now, so what, like 35 years ago at this point? <laughs> gross, gross, gross. Okay. Um. Hey, everyone, when you have a big decision to make, just err on the side of human life. That's all. Right. Yeesh. Anyway. Well, that was an excellent story, Claire. Um, my story is too long. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go ahead and just end this week's episode here. And then we'll do my story next time because mine's too long. Doomed history takes a lot, I think, in order to like set it up and be like, this is why it was doomed. Or to come back around and be like, and be like this is why it was doomed. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So and I was trying to like condense mud and be like, <laughs> this could be like hours. I need to like I know, but, shorten it. But when you were make telling me all of term. your research, I'm like, holy hell, like I only have like two sources for my well, three. I have three sources. But I'm like, holy crap. But I also didn't. It was know just because some of it, like Wikipedia, like mm-hmm. good God. All the all the like science ease. I'm like, I I, mm-hmm. I need I need somebody to dumb this down for me. <laughs> like <laughs> I need somebody to like uh, speak and more normal people talk. <laughs> more normal people. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Well, here I will go ahead and put in this week's sweary affirmation. Okay. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Have the balls to say what everyone else is thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, and also to say, no, we will not launch today because we do not know <laughs> that the O-rings are stable enough to manage it. Let's wait. Yeah. Right. God. People suck. People do suck. Well, I guess that means that it's time for Tarot Time with April. A spooky spooky. All right. I don't know, Claire. What do we think is going to happen this time? 
<laughs> Who knows? Mm -hmm. Trying to turn on my moon lamp here. There we go. There we go. All right. Tell me when to stop. Um, what's a good space th song? I don't know any. Um, <laughs> ground control to Major Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Ground control to Major Tom. I don't it's, think I know. Uh, it's Ziggy Stardust. Oh, I what's, thought, what's I the what's the the theme song to Armageddon? Oh, I don't want to miss a thing. I don't don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to <laughs> fall asleep because I'd miss you, baby. <laughs> and I don't want to miss a thing. Okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Like that was the first Armageddon. I was like, "What's that stupid?" Because like, what was the other one that was also Armageddon, but wasn't Deep Armageddon? Impact. Thank you. Deep Impact, because it came out first. Deep Impact did. I think so. No, I don't remember. I just remember they were both out at the same time, and they were the same. They were. Movie, really. They were. Do, 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 do. Because then there was also like volcano and then another one that was like volcano yes, which um, like dante's peak Dante, or something. yeah dante's peak because that's the one i remember that's where grandma burns her legs to push people across the acid river or something right <laughs> god the 90s man wait all right we are going to start off our week with the knight of cups knight of cups our midweek will be filled with the sun And I'm sure you won't remember this one at all, Claire, but we're going to end our week with... Uh-oh. The Pope. Oh, my gosh! Really? Oh, no, right! Oh, out of all the cards in that freaking he deck. It comes up so much. There are so many I that we haven't even had. I know. I don't even understand why he hates me so much, what he's coming at me for, but he's obviously coming at me. Okay. The Knight of Cups. Are you... You're going to love this. He sits in the quad, jeans, a white t-shirt, and a worn copy of Vonnegut dangling limply from his hand <laughs> as he stares out into the distance. I think I remember you reading mm -hmm. this to me once. <laughs> he smokes, of course, and his dark hair is tousled and curly. He says hi to you as you pass, but his smile doesn't reach his eyes. He looks sad, and his sadness is on your mind for the rest of your life. <laughs> Wow. <sighs> but he is so romantic, I can't even stand it. And that is literally all it says about the Knight of Cups. <laughs> he's romantic? What? Yep. Well, I mean, you know, he's that... Like a that, brooding... Well, like, the, like yeah, me. the brooding, super intelligent, deep-thinking college guy with, like, the, the dark hair. Like, I get it. I see it. I see it. It's that... It's the mood. I feel the mood. Hmm. Not really sure what that means, but that's all it says about that. Um, the sun, if I recall, is about shining light onto shitty things, bringing bad shit into the sun and making it seen. That's my memory, anyway. Does that sound right? I think so. <clears throat> the sun, shining light on all the things. Shining the light. Bringing things the into things. the light. It's I am happy. Mm-hmm. Shining the light on the things that are in the dark. He investigates them and leaves them exposed, even if they worry him. It seems to be just moving things into light, reaching into the darkest corners and burning away the sadness. So I guess the sadness of the Knight of Cups is going to get burned away. Because, you know, he had the sadness you'll never forget. <laughs> we're going to burn away that sadness. That's right. So, you know, and then we're going to end with the Pope, who is... I... <sighs> Yeah, the Pope. I sometimes feel like, am I, what, what is it? Am, am I a teacher? Am I supposed to be teaching people the things? Am I looking for a teacher? Because I feel like the Pope is supposed to be the guy that communicates between God and, like, the normal people. So, I, I what, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want from me, Pope? Please be more clear in the future. So, I don't know romantic 
darkness with some sadness, but we're going to burn away that sadness and bring all the things into the light and be happy. And because we're happy, we're going to finally know what the Pope wants. How about that? Right. <laughs> Fuck that nonsense. Maybe he'll leave us alone. He'll never leave us alone. <laughs> he torments us. It's my birth card. And I'm he starting does. to be like, hey, hey. Um, I think we've want? only had, I think we've only had my birth card like once. And we get the Pope all the damn time. Like all the yeah. damn time. Because which one did we? Was it the devil? Was that the one we had? Um, or the we lovers? had the lovers. I think we've had them both, but only once each. Yeah, I think. But I don't remember now. Hmm. What's your other birth card? Temperance, which we've had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, whatever. I don't know. I shuffle the damn cards, guys. I shuffle the cards. <laughs> I make Claire tell me when to stop smushing them around. So, like, I don't I don't even know anymore. I don't even know. It's true. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess come back next week and see what the Pope has to tell us again. Right. And come and enjoy my story that I will be bringing you. You'll love it. I promise. And until then, you can find us in all the things and at all the places <laughs> at Brunch and Judge. Please follow, like, subscribe, comment, yada, yada, yada. And if you would like to send us topics for our wheel or any stories that you would like us to cover, please send them to us at Brunch and Judge at gmail.com. So until next time, keep on brunching. And keep on judging. Especially the people who wear the same exact outfits as everybody <laughs> else. Bye. <Yes>. Bye. <laughs>